Education and Outreach Coordinator for the Arkansas Historic Preservation Program. This is part of our monthly sandwiching and history tours where we visit sites across the, the central Arkansas um, and just give you a bit of history over the lunch hour on a, the, usually the first Friday of the month. Um, I'd also like to thank, to thank the staff of Rockwater Village um, for helping us kind of be the organization for this tour um, and to help us do a little bit of like where we're going to park and that kind of thing. Um, and they were also very helpful with some information as well. Um, they are the ones who have this, this large housing development that's kind of growing up around this area. And they're also the group that helped to save the smokestack when this all got developed and turn it into this circle here as part of the road work so that it was saved and not knocked down. Um, I'd also like to say thank Ms. Sarah Vestal, who's a member of the Vestal family. Um, she is here with several other of her family members today. Um, so, um, Sarah, if you want to raise your hand, thank you very much. Um, and I also want to thank, uh, yes, please, Ms. Sarah. Um, she's written several articles about her family's history, several of which are in the Pulaski County Historical Association quarterly. So if you'd like more detailed information, there's some there. Um, and I'd also like to thank Tom Dillard because he's written several articles as well on the Vestal family that I've used. Um, just to get you situated about where you are, this is basically the Bering Cross neighborhood. Um, it's actually a little bit west of what was originally Bering Cross. Um, and that developed as a railroad community. It was a separate little town um, when they built the Bering Cross Bridge. And so that was in the 1870s, 1880s. Um, Union Pacific used to be Missouri Pacific Rail Yard. It's basically straight to our northeast. And Fort Logan Route is basically up on the cliff to our northwest. So we're kind of down here on the riverside. Um, so it was land that was not really seen as fit for development, but it was perfect for farming and perfect for what the Vestals wanted, which was an area where they could grow mass amounts of flowers and other plants. Um, Joseph Wysong Vestal arrived in Pulaski County in 1880 with a mission to find land to move his established nursery and florist business to the area. He would become the first local florist in the area, a service that the city of Little Rock had lacked since its founding. By the time he died in 1917, the Vestal Nursery was a huge operation, considered almost one of the largest in the United States. He owned at least 220 acres along the northern bank of the Arkansas River, with a large portion of that area given over to greenhouses, heating plants, support structures, and rows and rows of ornamental shrubs and flowers, as well as many varieties of berries. Under the direction of Joseph's children and grandchildren, the business would continue to expand, and by the 1950s, the nursery had 300,000 square feet under glass. That didn't include any of the row crops that they had as well. That's nearly seven acres of land in greenhouse space alone. The company would also produce a yearly catalog of plants avail available for mail order from 1861 until 1954, a 93-year run. And it was considered one of the earliest mail order catalogs in the country. Um, Tiffany had one earlier, but it beat out Sears and Roebuck. So this was before they Joseph Vestal was the son of Aaron and Sarah Vestal. Aaron and Stella Vestal were Quakers who were descendants of family that had moved to the New World as part of the initial colonization of the area of what would become the state of Pennsylvania, led by William Penn in the late 17th century. The Vestal family would eventually move to North Carolina in the 1750s and then Indiana in the 1810s. Both of Joseph W. Vestal's parents and their extended family are thought to have been active in the Underground Railroad, both in Indiana and Virginia, using their homes and businesses as hiding spots and way stations along these escape routes for escaping slavery. Joseph followed his father into the farming market business. His father, Aaron, had become known for his skill in horticulture in Indiana in the 1840s. And by 1844, Aaron Vestal had patents for improving and keeping sweet potatoes, and had also published a book for, quote, raising and keeping a sweet potato, end quote. And he was known locally as the Sweet Potato King. And Vestal family tradition notes that Joseph Vestal paid for his wedding service to Josephine in sweet potatoes. And that was in 1856. Joseph soon started his own floral business alongside his father. 
and by the 1870s was doing a large business in greenhouse-grown flowers. According to family descendants, Bessel moved to Little Rock during the 1880s in order to take advantage of a longer growing season. It may also be that he welcomed the abolition of slavery across the South, and he know, knew he could benefit from the cheap land and new transportation routes offered by the new major railroads in Little Rock. Um, his new land was also adjacent to the new Bering Cross Bridge across the river. This bridge not only served as a railroad bridge, but by the 1870s, a second deck had been added above the rail line to serve vehicular and pedestrian traffic. In 1886, the bridge was rebuilt and the vehicular section was lowered to the side of the rail line. And in 1927, the Bering Cross Bridge was washed out by the floodwaters and had to be re rebuilt with the new bridge opening in 1929. The Bering Cross Bridge was again redesigned and partially rebuilt in the 1960s to, to have the lip span added so that, that it could do the navigation channels on the Arkansas River. But it's still in the same location as that original bridge. And um, after moving, quote, plants, hotbed ash, and other equipment, including all that was necessary for the manufacture of flower pots and urns, as well as more than 500 varieties of roses, Joseph Vessel soon settled with his family, which would grow to include five children, in a house near to the new nursery. Interestingly, he also started attending the Episcopal Church in Little Rock rather than joining the local Quaker meeting group. By 1890, the Vessel Company was offering a wide array of mail order plants, including 182 variety of strawberry plants, quote, including orange and purple colored, in quote, strawberries, which I would love to see purple strawberries. Um, Joseph remarried after his first wife's death in 1889 to Miss Nora DeBear Carno of Little Rock, and he remained active in the business, working with his sons up until his death in 1917. His funeral was a grand affair and included him laying in state at the Scottish Rite Consistory on Scott Street in a building that predated the current Albert Pike Temple that's now there. Um, in 1890, Joseph is entered in partnership with his son Charles Vesto. He was 24 years old. He also changed the name of the business to Joseph W. Vestal and Sons Florist and Nurseryman. And two years after being made partner in the business, Charles married Chult Charlie Walters, and the couple would have four children, three of whom were later active in the family business. Joseph Walters, Charles Howell, and Ruth. In 1892, Charles pushed the company to publish the first color catalog. Um, which is thought to be the first color catalog published west of the Mississippi River. Joseph's eldest son, George, became a horticultural professor working at Purdue University. He also helped with the family business and specialized in the study and cultivation of magnolia and evergreen trees. And several of his trees still survive around Little Rock and North Little Rock. Unfortunately, George died in 1891 after suffering from consumption. By, 18, by 1918, the company was sending out at least 50,000 catalogs of 80 pages to customers worldwide, and Charles had helped to increase the greenhouse acreage to four times the area under glass in the 1880s. During Charles' leadership of the company, they became nationwide for their no, known nationwide for their roses, many of which they had propagated, including the thornless David O. Dodd rose, um, which was, quote, a magnificent rich crimson flush scarlet with well-shaped buds opening into a large, beautiful shaped flower, end quote. The early success of the Vestal Roses, which would soon cover a huge area of their land holdings, including a large portion of what is today Vestal Park just to the north, led the city of Little Rock to become known as the City of Roses during the early 20th century, and the David O. Dodd Rose was selected as the official flower of the 1936 State Centennial Celebration. Although Charles was raised in his parents' home in the Bering Cross area, he continued business allowed, his continued business allowed him to buy a fine, large home on Lincoln Street, what is today Cantrell Avenue, near where the Packet House still stands. This area was once full of large Victorian area homes, and Charles was particularly fond of his view of the nursery across the river, as well as its location nearer to the bridge, so that he could easily walk to work and back home for lunch each day. Charles was also responsible for the levee system around the site that helped to save the Vestal land holdings along the river from several high water events during the 1890s through the 1920s. These levees, however, were no match for the flood of 1927. 
the high water inundated the nursery vessel and grease out greenhouses on the week before Easter, their busiest week of the year. Every available worker, was, as well as Vestal family members, worked to stack sandbags to keep the river at bay. These efforts worked, at least in part. While the main river flooding was kept out of the nursery, the overflow and backwater eventually flooded the greenhouse area, where thankfully many of the plants were saved due to being um, elevated planting benches. Also, many of the roses were saved due to their location farther north on higher ground. Several of the service buildings, including the original taller incinerator and smokestack, were damaged by the flood and had to be replaced. The smokestack we see today um, is 90 feet tall and actually replaced an original smokestack that was taller. So this one was built in the, between 1927 and 1929 after the flood in the area. So the area that we're standing in, this would have been one of the, the service buildings. So we've got a, a, a drawing of it. Um, so we're actually standing in a, near the round smokestack. There was an incinerator building. And then basically all of this area behind us and to the north was greenhouses. Large greenhouses. And if you ever look at some of the early um, aerial maps from the 1950s and 60s, you can see they're just, they look like huge, just swaths of black. And that's the greenhouses in the area. Um, the office would have been on River Road, which is basically what the river trail is now. So if you actually walk along the river trail, you're actually walking very near to the original office. And it was a kind of stone craftsman looking building that was attached to the front of the greenhouse. So they could go directly from the office into the greenhouse space. Um, after the death of Charles Vestal in 1928, the company changed its focus from mainly retail catalog sales to supplying regional wholesale markets for other florists, nurseries, and retailers. Charles' son, Charles Howell Vessel, and Joseph Walter Vessel were shown on this image here as well. And they were known as Howell and Walter. Um, as well as their daughter, Ruth Vessel, who was the, one of the roses was named after. Um, they continued and had uh, continued the company's legacy. Howell oversaw the company as president, Walter was a horticulturalist, and Ruth oversaw the retail location. And each of the siblings were equal partners. In the early 1920s, Howell obtained acorns from an acquaintance for the Southern Live Oak Tree, which is an evergreen oak tree, and he planted several in Central Arkansas. Um, it's possible that this includes the live oak trees at 15th and Pike Street in North Little Rock. Um, and this is a very unique tree because the tree actually owns itself. The tree was deeded its own land to save it from the extension of the Pike extension. There's actually another tree that this happened to also, I think it's in Alabama. Um, but it was basically for a way the tree to be saved so that they can never take the land. And the little triangle of land that it sits on is actually a city park. I um, mean, it's considered one of the smallest city parks in the state of Arkansas. So that, that's one of their legacy as well. And, and it is a very unusual tree because live oak trees don't grow here. So it's unusual that it came here and got planted. They're usually found on the coast on the Gulf. And so those are the big, huge oak trees you see in New Orleans with the big, strong that's a live oak, and that's what that one is in North Philadelphia. During the 30s, the Great Depression led to a massive shrinkage in the retail sales, and the company changed their offering, streamlining the varieties of plants they offered for sale. Throughout the 40s and 50s, this business continued to shift away from retail and towards supplying fresh flowers and plants to the wholesale market. New cut flower buildings with refrigeration were constructed on the site, as well as more greenhouses. The annual retail catalog ended in the last issue of the fall of 1954, after 93 years in publication. Charles Vestal died in 1954, and his brother, brother Joseph Walter took over the leadership of the company until his death in 1971. Both Walter and Powell, Vestal was credited with much of the success of the firm during the 20th century. They both studied horticulture at the University of Arkansas, and Walter eventually focused on the horticultural aspects of the company, breeding new, new, many new vari flower varieties, um, including at one time growing 600 varieties of daylilies. The company also offered a variety of vegetable plants, fruit and nut trees, including eight different types of tomatoes and six different types of pecan trees. And customers and farmers could order seeds, potted plants, bulbs, roots, as well as fertilized chicken eggs. 
Um, as always, the roses were a huge part of the business, and the firm hybridized many that they named after family members. Arkansas landmarks and leaders, including the Ruth Vestal Climbing Rose, the Mildred Vessel Vessel Rose, the Petty Jean, the Dardanelle, the Albert Pike, the Pink Little Rock Rose, the Mrs. U.M. Rose Rose, as well as the Senator Josie Robinson Rose of 1954. Or sorry, 1940. And the company offerings were wide, including not only flowering plants, but ferns, palms, and the American Wonder Lemon. In 1952, it was reported that the company was growing more than 1 million chrysanthemum plants for cut flowers, all in greenhouses, and in the same year had produced roughly 750,000 cut roses. In the 1950s, the fourth generation of the Vestal family took over the company, with Joseph Walter Vessel Jr. and Kent Greer Vessel joining the company. They were again expanding into other floral and horticultural areas, including out-of-season plants, new investment in flower crops in California and Colorado, and new wholesale region locations across the region. During the 60s, the assets of the company were split, with one company focusing on retail floors, wholesale flowers, and supplies, while the other company focused on potted plants. Eventually, the retail and wholesale flower business was sold to Florifax of Tulsa in 1977, which now continues under different names. The Vessel descendants would continue to work in horticulture and flowers, opening various businesses in silk flowers and decorations, hydroponic operations, organic greenhouses, and blueberry farms. After the sale of much of the Vessel Holdings, the remaining family business operated by the Vessels eventually went bankrupt in the 1980s and the large expansive greenhouses was soon torn down, and all that remained by 2000 was the large brick smokestack. And there's also a section of concrete that you can see kind of back up the road here, and that would have been at some of their sales offices and some of where they did the kind of floral arrangement offices. And, if, and you can kind of see that on uh, this one that Ralph is holding here at the very front of the image, that small piece of that part of that sales office they had over here. Um, during their heyday, they also had a shower, flower shops across the city, including for a long time at the Marion Hotel. Um, they had a flower shop in the hotel, and that's where they sold a lot of their flowers locally. Um, today. Uh, today, the area is again seeing a resurgence as new homes are built along the river. The surrounding land was purchased by Jim Jackson and Lisa Farrell, who have used it to start the Rockwater Village community and who also helped to save the smokestack by having it integrated into the street planning as a feature of the site. The Vestal name lives on in the surrounding neighborhood, with Vestal Street and Vestal Park just to the north on land given by the family to the city of North Little Rock. Also, the Vestal Addition is now part of the city of North Little Rock. That land was sold by Joseph Vestal and eventually became part of the small municipality of Bering Cross in 1899 before the entire small town was annexed by the city of North Little Rock in 1905. The name of the town Bering Cross and the name of the bridge came from the nearby bridge which itself was named for the company who financed the construction, the Bering and Company Bankers of the United Kingdom. The cross part of the name was a reference to the company's president's family coat of arms which included a cross, the Bering Cross. Awesome. Thank you all so much for coming. Um